Chapter 2. Nine little sailor boys sat up very late. One overslept himself, and then there were eight. Filthy night. I tried to go out to get some more wood for the fire, but the wind drove me back. A storm like that will keep us all indoors. My apologies for the accommodations, Mr. Narricott, but all the beds are taken. Makes one wonder where the Owens were planning to sleep, doesn't it? A good servant follows instructions, sir. He does not question his employer. Unless you'd like to share the deceased's room with the corpse, this will do fine. Thank you, Rogers. I'll wish you a good night then, sir. Everyone should be sound asleep by now. Good time for a little stealth work. I copied the contents into my notebook. This could use a closer look. I wonder what's recorded on this side. I'm pleased to see at least one of you has thought to turn the record over. Any good house party should include party games. This weekend is no exception. I have devised several little games of the mind to challenge your wits, and I hope you find the rewards for each to be worth the effort. You'll have to discover my little amusements on your own, however. I've scattered them all over this delightful island retreat. I hope that you will find them suitably entertaining. Whoever it is, please leave us. My wife needs her rest. Sorry about that, Rogers. Not at all. There's nothing I can do for the victim now. Tightly locked. I can't open it. It's locked. He's as tight as an owl. I expect nothing could wake him up. Morning is coming. I'd best get back to my bed.
Well, I didn't get much rest, but at least I have something to show for it. I'd best see if everyone has come down for breakfast. Shipwreck Island. Those currents appear quite deadly. Sticklehaven. Hopefully I'll live to see the place again. Wargrave on Justice. I can only imagine the egotism that lurks within those pages. Property of Teresa Robson. I transcribe the interesting passages into my notebook. It's a book holder. Seems like a long time since it's been used. A rather beautifully made globe of the world. The drawer is locked. This bears a closer look. Let me examine this further. There, back to their original state. I transcribe the pertinent passages in my notebook. 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 That looks like the jetty here on the island. He looks quite happy. She a little less so. Normally I would never violate someone's privacy this way. However, given the circumstances, I will examine the entries for clues and transcribe any passages I find pertinent.
That works. Just barely. The flower stuck to bits of it. Aha! A fingerprint! Tightly locked. flower stuck to bits of it. This is a good reference print for Dr. Armstrong. The flower stuck to bits of it. This is a good reference print for Miss Claythorne. Not that I think she's capable of murder. flower stuck to bits of it. This is a good reference print for Miss Brent. The flower stuck to bits of it. This is a good reference print for Mr. Marston. This appears to match Marston's fingerprint. If what Narakot told Vera is true, and mind you, I take anything he says with a grain of salt, then they will not be sending a boat until at least Monday, even if the storm clears. Wise to remember, Narakot's the odd man out here. Yes, thanks to you, I believe, Blore. At least nothing else has occurred. I hope you are correct, Miss Claythorne. However, I feel compelled to draw your attention to this table's centerpiece. Now two are broken. How odd. Ah, Mr. Narakot, good morning. Since Mr. Marsden won't be joining us, there is an extra place for breakfast, although breakfast itself seems to be a trifle behind schedule. I'm afraid there is no breakfast at present. Mrs. Rogers has um, not been able to carry on this morning. What's the matter with the woman? I was promised fresh apple juice this morning. 
I must tell you a sad piece of news. Mrs. Rogers died in her sleep. Any theories about Mrs. Rogers' death? She was a very skittish creature. And she had a shock last night. It might have been heart failure. Her heart certainly failed to beat. What caused it to fail is the question. Did you hear anything in the night? No. My sleep was quite restful. Much obliged for your assistance, Miss Glaythorn. You're a detective, Mr. Bloor. Any theories? I appreciate you recognizing the fact there's a professional present. I'd like to know what she had to eat or drink last night before she collapsed. Rogers assures me she had nothing whatsoever. Of course he would say that. But see here. They've done a murder and gotten away with it. Now she's all hysterical, likely to give the show away. She's a danger to her husband. That's what she is. Oh, I should hardly think a man would do that to his wife. You said you knew something about the history of this island. Most of the old stuff can be found in the library. Its more recent history is just as interesting, though. But I'm not inclined to divulge that just yet. Thanks, Bloor. Any theories about Mrs. Rogers' death? I'm sure Mrs. Rogers wasn't to blame. A good, loyal woman. Did you hear anything in the night? I thought... I thought I heard a voice calling my name. My wife... She died several years ago. I expect it was a dream. General, you said you thought you recognized Lombard. Did I? Yes, I expect I did. But I failed to see what business it might be of yours. Good day to you, General. Perhaps this will grant the aging general increased mobility. Are you sure you can't tell me how you recognize Mr. Lombard? Lombard, yes. He does look familiar. But the name is wrong. Or is it? I'm sorry, young man. My memory plays tricks on me. Thank you, General. Any theories about Mrs. Rogers' death? Conscience. What do you mean by that? She was accused, together with her husband, of having deliberately murdered her former employer, an old lady. You all saw her last night. She broke down completely. The shock of her wickedness brought home to her was too much to bear. She literally died of fear. Possibly, if there was cardiac weakness. Call it, if you prefer, an act of God. That is all, Miss Brett. Rogers, so sorry to hear about your wife. She seemed a good sort. Thank you, sir. Still, one mustn't dwell on the past. There is much to be done. Sorry to ask you this. Any thoughts on your wife's death? She was a good wife. A, a bit high-strung, but we made a good team. I often didn't give her credit for that, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't kinder to her these past few years. I'm sorry I didn't listen to her that night. Did you hear anything in the night? I may have heard something at our bedroom door. I'm not sure. I slept in the bath so as not to disturb Ethel. If I'd been in the room, I might have noticed. I might have been able to get the doctor in time. Nonsense, man. There's nothing you could have done. Don't reproach yourself. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary since you arrived here at Rogers? Just this, sir. This house is more like a museum than a residence. I've dusted every square inch, and I've found articles left behind by many previous owners, including the Robsons, that actress, and even the Admiralty. The only owners who seem to have left no mark at all are Mr. and Mrs. Owen. I appreciate your candor, Mr. Rogers.
The body was thoroughly searched. No need to disturb it now. The flower stuck to bits of it. This is a good reference print for Thomas Rogers. The flower stuck to bits of it. Aha! A fingerprint! This could use a closer look. This bears a closer look. This appears to match Thomas Rogers' fingerprint. Eight little sailor boys. The plot thickens. What was the cause of death? Impossible to say offhand. There must be an autopsy. I certainly couldn't give a certificate without one. When did you find out? Rogers roused me at first light. He'd gotten up to light the stove and see to the power generator before waking her. When she didn't respond, he got me. Can you tell when she died? Without an autopsy, not for certain, but it must have been some hours ago. The body was uh, quite cold. Did you hear anything in the night? No, although it appears I should have. That is all for now, Dr. Armstrong. Any theories about Mrs. Rogers' death? We know that she consumed something last night. Dr. Armstrong told us so. I, Mr. Lombard? You gave her a sedative. A small dose of trial, nothing more. Doctors have made mistakes before. You're suggesting I accidentally gave Mrs. Rogers an overdose? Accidentally or otherwise. One death may have been an accident or suicide, but two in the space of a few hours? Simply outrageous! Man of my standing. Any more questions, Mr. Narragott? Did you hear anything in the night? I'm a very light sleeper. In future, I hope everyone will bear that in mind. Yes, several times I heard something. You didn't investigate? With a judge, a detective, and an amateur sleuth in the house, you hardly need my poor skills in that line. I prefer to keep watch. The hunter in his blind? A good analogy, Judge. You said you recognized Owen's voice. I've had time to think it over, and I'm sure I did. But I see no reason to share that information with you. Thanks for your time, Mr. Lombard. 